So my um, uh, <coughs> presentation is about the data privacy and multilinguality in OJS. When I'm talking about OJS, I'm always talking about all the uh, three products in uh, PKP uh, portfolio, OMP, Open Monograph Press, and Open Preprint Server. Uh, what is, uh, the first thing I will give some info in mot in, uh, motivation, uh, why we had to do that, and give a very small introduction to the Craft OA project and the uh, work package we are working. I mean, I think there are already some presentations about Craft OA in general, what it is doing. And I will talk about data privacy a little bit in detail, what are the general definitions of GDPR, and the current status of the OJS from 3.1 to 3.4 and what we have planned for the 3.5, which is coming at the end of this year, and what is being already implemented in the data privacy, and also the same things about the multilinguality. I'm only having one uh, slide about the multilinguality because uh, the colleague is, cannot be there. And I will do the, the conclusion about the uh, things that we have been um, implementing and some suggestions for the decision makers if you want to upgrade to 3.5. Uh, at the end, at the beginning of the next year or at the end of next year when the LTS release 3.3 runs out. So what is the motivation? I changed to a TIP in 2020 to build a um, diamond open access press. And uh, the first thing was our GDPR officer was saying, your OJS is not GDPR compatible. General, ma general managers can edit users without their consent. General managers can search users in other journals without their consent and list their email addresses. And the default theme in OJS, the accessibility tested one, it does not have a, a cookie statement automatically, and the logs. I mean, the logs, uh, as a technical person would, all, <coughs> would know, logs is not always dependent on the applications, but you have to anonymize the IP addresses and the personal data. Multilinguality. I've been working with this uh, OMP in, <laughs> since 2014. Uh, and not, I mean, even before that, the problem was there, OJS, at that time was only OJS and OMP, and they are, we did not have multilingual URL structures, and it's even not there. You can, you, you, as you may know, then you have the practical, the possibility to have different languages in OJS at have currently more than 50 languages, but you can change the languages, but you cannot permanently bookmark these things. And it is, and the problem does not end there if you want to um, index them and you do not have permanent URLs. Here are the solutions have been discussed so long. It is documented in PKP forum, GitHub, and certain sprints and everywhere in the presentations you and we also know what is, what is the real requirement there, and we also know what is the solution, but it has not been implemented. Why? People would ask so long. The problem is that it is complex, and it is a core feature. And to develop this, these features in OJS or MP context, it's very time consuming. You need the resources. And this kind of uh, development should be coordinated very well with the community because it is a big change. And last but not least, the priority, I mean, that is the most uh, determining um, factor of these kind of developments. So in 2022, there was this grant application, Craft Aware, and TIP and TSV, we joined this in the work package four, which is doing, I think, the OJS core development. I think this is the only package which, which is doing OJS core. I just wanted to mention some background also. Um, to do this kind of OJS code, even this is the second time in the history that partners have done, the only, uh, only partners who have done this kind of thing is uh, a few Berlin with their versioning. And we, uh, yeah, we have been interested to do this. And TIP is leading this uh, uh, sub-task 4.1, data privacy and multilingual. There will be some other features, as you may see, will be implemented during this project, but they will be not in 3.5, they will be coming in 3.6. I just also want to mention that I have written also PKP there because this development is we are not doing alone. PKP is heavily in, involved uh, in this development because they have to define a lot of things. We have to change a uh, lot of the infrastructure of uh, OJS to uh, do these developments. Before I go to the implementations we have done, I will be, I mean, most of you know, but I will be 
very shortly uh, defining some of the things. Uh, the terms that we are using when we are talking about the data subject, we are talking about the readers, authors of the uh, OJS, OMP, and OPS, whose um, private data is processed by us. And we always talk about the personal data. I think the word personally identify information is more uh, correct in this case. There is any information about a person, maybe it's a name, a surname, uh, email address, phone number, their address, social network IDs, IP address, everything can be personal data. Data controller is generally the editorial team who, is, um, who defines the data processing terms for the data subject. And the data processor, that is often the service providers who manages data in behalf of the data controller. In this case, um, OJS hosters. Consent, consent is an agreement between the data subject, uh, which is shared by the, uh, with the data processor. And GDPR, all of you know, 2018, 15th of May, uh, it's a regulation how our data is uh, stored by the data processors. And GDPR clearly defines what are the, um, and also mandates which rights the data subject must have. For example, the right to be informed what is happening with their data, the right to access their data, right for modification, right for the erasure of their data, and the data subjects can also uh, object processing of their data, even parts of processing of their data. These are the terms that we'll be using. So what kind of data we are processing in our OJS systems? We have four kinds of data, user registration data. In this case, there are also other metadata fields that you have to enter, but generally these are the uh, needed ones, username, first name, last name, email, and password. And the contributor metadata, the, uh, metadata that means practically the um, author metadata, there we have to add the first name, last name, email address, and the country. Um, and the workflow. Due to the nature of our software and the services we provide, we have to record all the actions that is happening in the uh, systems, practically even the notifications we are, uh, we are sending, when and whom, everything is recorded, reviewer requests, editorial decisions, even file uploads, everything is recorded. And the general information, uh, visitor information such as cookies, as some of you may know, OJS even records from readers the, the IP address. And this is not 100% GDPR compatible. And server logs for statistics, we need the server logs for our statistics, but uh, this can be practically corrected using another mechanisms, not only, um, not only the, in OJS uh, field, but you, you can use um, IP address anonymizing tools on the fly, or you can later delete them if you need fu uh, functional requirements. So this is something what I told, some of you know, up to 3.5, then the journal, ma uh, journal manager can just go to this uh, uses and roles. Oops, what is, uh, it is changing, I'm sorry. So you can just edit the metadata and add new roles. The user may not know what, is hap what has happened. Just, uh, this is not GDPR compatible. And the other thing, it is a more, um, I would say like a more uh, dangerous one. You can just um, search and you can just select this um, field, include users with no roles in the JSON, no, <clears throat> no roles in this channel as a general manager. And then, then you can just, uh, suppose you have an installation, you have 2000 uh, users in, all, in this multi, in multi uh, journal installation. You just search for A, B, C, D, and E, F, and to up to the Z, and you will have all the users. Um, yeah, this is uh, this has to be. Uh, if you are GDPR compatible, this feature has to be uh, disabled. There is a workaround for that. I mean, it's not publicly. I have done that practically. What you can do is when the, you can you have to actually program it two three lines that uh, when the result is coming, you have to restrict it that only the system administrations can see this uh, data. So after uh, so much discussions, we have uh, decided, even after consulting the community a lot, what we have to do is we have to disallow data controllers from creating and modifying accounts for data subjects without their contents. That is, 
general managers will not be able to edit the um, user data anymore. Okay, some of it, so oh, that is that can be a lot of work for us. I have written them at the last um, point. Yeah, more more workload for managing editors and significant work. Uh, yeah, you will also need to train your uh, personnel in uh, this kind of change. Any modification, I mean that any modification that you will need the data consent. And uh, we try to make the workflow maximally intuitive. And the data subject, I mean, uh, in OJS OMP uh, uh, context, the data subject must have the right to erase, modify, and get notified of what is happening. And uh, there should be an invitation pro uh, process. Uh, in OJS, you may already know in the uh, current versions, if you want to say a lot of emails, o OJS is doing it in a synchronous way. That means it will send all the emails, and uh, when it is uh, done, the server is free for that. That can be performance issues, and that has to be solved um, also within this project. So how do we go to implement? We, uh, we thought practically, we will uh, we change the way that we are looking at the system. In the users, and we will uh, re uh, retain the functionality for uh, system administrators because GDPR allows for maintenance purposes to access the data. And then we will introduce a new role. New role. This we had earlier the add user and this kind of uh, names. We will add only one uh, way: invite a user to a role. Then general managers can invite them with their email addresses. I will show you in the demo later how it looks like. And we wanted to streamline reviewer modification process. Also, there was this add a new user, enroll to a, ex, uh, enroll as an existing user, and this will also be changed. Invite a new reviewer action. Yeah, what we we required, we we have to rewrite the uh, data management, uh, the, the user management workflow, and user management interface, and we had to uh, also uh, add the email support for that. So then we had we uh, we identified actually four different workflows. What can, what can happen uh, when we are editing um, when we are adding editors, authors, and readers, and this kind of users to the system? Copy editors, layout editors, and uh, then uh, we have three uh, three different use cases. One is the a new user who is not in the system. We have the users of the the same journal, and we have users of the other journals. This is also the same for the reviewer. In the reviewer, you will also have this kind of users. And um, we also now uh, in the 3.5, um, the OKID will be a core feature. It won't be a plugin anymore. And we have we integrated these functions, this um, river invitation process, practically uh, uh, with and without. That means we have four use cases. And uh, if anybody is interested, and uh, this is this is the server where this is in. Uh, uh, integrated the current uh, status. I think this is the first time it's publicly we are talking about this GDPR uh, development. And if anybody's interested, I can give the credentials for that. And if if somebody is planning to just uh, test that, because there is some kind of configuration needed to locally do that at the moment. And now I will show you the de demo video, how it looks like. We can see the video. Practically, you will be having an inviter uh, user to role here, and then you will be having a table where the invitations are listed. Currently, the default is two, uh, two invitations, but it can be, uh, it will be shown, but uh, um, later it will be, you can configure how much uh, invitations you want to see in your system. And you will see the names and uh, which roles the users are invited, and you can also edit an invitation. Editing means practically deleting the old invitation, and you will be getting a new in, in, uh, invitation, and canceling is practically deleting the invitation. And uh, somebody who is uh, invited, then their um, invitation would be null, and it would not work. So then you can invite a user to a role. You, if you click that, then you will be uh, coming to this kind of step-by-step uh, -step process. And you can either search a user who is in the system, and, and here, automatically, the system will decide if it is an existing user or a new user. And here, I'm giving a hypothetical email address. And uh, then we can hit the search a user button. So now it will uh, give you this uh, the, the second step that practically you have to add the uh, 
first name and the last name of the user. General manager can define at the at the at that moment, and you can add one or more roles to the user. And you can also now define when the uh, when this role has access to the system. And the general master, uh, if it is uh, visible in the general master, or if it is not visible, you can define at the at that moment of the time. And then you can uh, send the uh, email, save and continue, and then the. So then you are you are you'll be redirected to an email template, and uh, later you can also add your own uh, template. But it's the, the default template. You can also add uh, more email addresses, not only the one for the user. You can add copies, and if you want, and uh, you can edit the email. And uh, there is these variables in OJS template system, and they, uh, this is how the email would look like. And then you can invite user to this role. At that moment. Uh, success uh, pop-up will appear, and later when the system is online, this, these dialogues will be changing a little bit because PKP is uh, changing the design of these labels a little bit, uh, but uh, in the, uh, uh, this should be a little bit similar. And after that, if you go to, uh, because we have two emails, if you go to the second and you will see the invitation is sent now. After that, you can practically log into your email uh, account and see how it looks like to the user. This is a demo system where we are testing emails practically, and the email has come, and all the variables which were defined is automatically filled, and you will get this kind of email. The text you can define for your own journal how you would like to add. Uh, then the user can either accept or decline the invitation. And in this case, I will accept the invitation. And it will be redirected to the OJS. And there you will see the practically two workflows, either with verifying ORCID ID or without verification. ORCID implementation is not 100% finished now. Therefore, I will just only show how uh, without ORCID it would work. But uh, yeah, then uh, the user has to define a username and a password and, in, uh, and also give consent to the privacy statement of the journal. We are recording this information that they have given the consent and save and continue. And at that moment, also the user or the data subject has the uh, opportunity to change their given names and first names if they want. If uh, if they want to change what, uh, what the general manager has done, and you have to give uh, it is mandatory. You have to give the affiliation and the country of the affiliation. Save and continue, and then you will get a preview, and you can check it, and if you want to still edit, then you can go back and edit it, and you will see which roles you are getting. So accept and continue, and at that moment, the user will be created, and you will get a success message here. And now you can log into the system. Yeah, because this was a copy, copy editor um, a role, it does not have so much uh, uh, roles, and this is how it would generally work. Yeah, that was the demo. Uh, so now I will go to uh, the multilinguality or multilingualism. Practically, uh, that is the, those uh, multilingual uh, functions uh, that we that I talked about uh, at the beginning. Uh, this or oh, everything will be implemented uh, through the project. Actually, the partners uh, in uh, TSV they have already done that, and it, you can you can just check in the um, URL mentioned here. You will, uh, uh, if you think uh, this is the numbers, uh, this these numbers of the journals. Practically, it is the the GitHub issue number that uh, that is that we are discussing these uh, uh, issues. And you can just uh, uh, we have now introduced a new URL structure that, depending on the language, you will have like uh, index.php, then en or fr uh, to the language. And uh, one significant change they have done: they have decoupled the language from the article. 
the, that means you can later also change the, the primary language of an article and and once uh, another one sin, uh, significant and uh, it, it's uh, what they what they are implementing currently is that you can have uh, titles and abstracts uh, and this kind of metadata of an article in different language it should not be a, a language which you have defined in your OGS. it's totally decoupled now then uh, you can just click on the uh, uh, the title for example and it will show how my which languages are available and you can just click and you can change the language and these things um, have been already implemented there yeah that is uh, actually the um, uh, I think it is not moving but anyhow I was in the, in the conclusion the conclusion uh, I, I think I remember everything was there what you have to uh, yeah just wanted to give that 3.5 will be released at the end of this year or at the beginning of the next year. It's a strict uh, timeline from PKP and uh, the, all these features will be there when this thing coming. And you have to actually be, because of this uh, editorial workflow with exchange, you have to plan some time for, uh, for editorial training for 3.5 specifically because that you did not have in the 3.3 and 3.4. And another thing is uh, practically what you have to also Earlier, some small uh, publishers may not have email functionality there, and then maybe you have to integrate an email function. I think most for the institutional providers, that's not a big deal. And uh, two things what I, uh, uh, okay, I already mentioned, it will be a core feature in OJS and OMP and OPS or, uh, there will be a core feature. That means there won't be any plugin. And the raw identifier uh, will be also, integrated into the core of the uh, core of OJS. It's a deep contribution. The developer is there, Gassi, I have seen him. He's doing the um, core of our core integration there. Yeah, that is uh, well, things the, that I think uh, are most uh, important in this uh, regard for OJS. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions now, and if you have time. <laughs>